Hello and welcome to the latest Auto Group Mr. Group Insight video. Today the Daily Brief team delves into the exciting world of autonomous driving technology. I'm Neil King, Auto Mr. Group Senior Data Journalist. I'm Tom Gegas, Daily Brief Journalist. And I'm Phil Curry, the Daily Brief Editor. So OEMs have uh, long been advancing technology that protects a vehicle's occupants in case of a collision but autonomous technology can actually help prevent accidents before they happen. Um, even the coronavirus hasn't derailed the automotive industry ambition in this uh, regard. And there's actually been quite a lot of activity within the self-driving arena, hasn't there, Tom? Absolutely, Neil. Uh, one huge name in, autonomous, in the autonomous game is Waymo. The Google-owned company's mission statement is to make it safe and easy for people and things to get where they're going. It goes on to say Waymo driver can improve the world's access and mobility while saving thousands of lives now lost to traffic crashes. Recently, Fiat Chrysler Automobile and Waymo announced they are expanding their strategic partnership. This deal will see FCA work exclusively with the self-driving company to develop level four technology for the car maker's entire fleet. This level of autonomy is defined by the Society of Automotive Engineers as a vehicle being capable of performing all driving functions under certain conditions. The pair developed the level four ready Chrysler Pacifica hybrid minivan and launched a commercial autonomous ride hailing service. The partnership will also look to bring self-driving uh, capabilities to commercial vehicles in lighter weight classes. Initially, they will look to integrate Waymo's technology into the Ram Pro Master van. This is, has a configurable platform allowing for a broad range of commercial customers. Now, Mike Manley, CEO of FCA, said our partnership is setting the pace for the safe and sustainable mo mobility solutions that will help define the automotive world in the years and decades to come. Yeah, and Waymo actually has um, quite a few partnerships across the automotive industry, doesn't it? Yes, indeed. Volvo Car Group, which includes its affiliates Polestar, Lincoln Co., uh, they're also partnering with Waymo. The two companies will first work together to integrate Waymo Driver into a new mobility-focused electric vehicle platform for ride-hailing services. Henrik Green, the Chief Technology Officer at Volvo, said, fully autonomous vehicles have the potential to improve road safety to previously unseen levels and to revolutionise the way people live, work and travel. Now, Volvo obviously has a name for itself as something as a safe vehicle manufacturer. So, of course, they, uh, all, they are all over the development of safety systems. They're also partnering with tech firm Lumina to provide LiDAR and autonomous technology for Volvo's next generation of cars. The partnership will deliver Volvo's next fully self-driving technology for highways. The Swedish car maker's next generation SPA2 modular vehicle architecture be available as hardware ready for autonomous drive for the start of production in 2022, with Lumar's LiDAR built into the roof. Lumar's technology is based on its high performance LiDAR sensors, which emit millions of pulses of light, which accurately reflect detection of where objects are by scanning the environment in 3D. It helps it create a real time map without requiring internet connectivity. Yeah, and interestingly, uh, Volvo's erstwhile owner, Ford. Um, obviously, it's also entered into collaboration, which places a large, large amount of emphasis on cameras and, and autonomy in general. Um, I believe you've been looking at that as well, Tom. Yes, indeed, I have. Uh, Ford is planning to work more closely with Intel's autonomous driving company, Mobileye. It's looking to develop improved collision avoidance technology. The collaboration is going to focus on camera-based detection capabilities for driver assistance systems. Now, this is going to include features like Ford collision warning, lane keeping, vehicle pedestrian cyclist detection. The newly developed technology will appear across Ford's global product lineup, including the new Mustang Mach-E and the F-150. Now, Mobileye uh, will provide its suit of EQ, IQ, that I is in I, IQ sensing tech and vision processing software to support Ford's Copilot 360 system, as well as a hands-free driving feature that will be introduced next year. Upcoming SAE level one and two driver assistance systems from the car maker will include auto high beam headlamps, pre-collision assist with automatic emergency braking and adaptive cruise control with stop and go lane centering. Yeah, however, I mean, it's not all entirely good news on the automotive front, is it though? Um, I mean, you know, obviously uh, some car makers may well be more cautious when it comes to labeling their, their self-driving systems from now on. And, uh, you know, there's one obviously very specific example Yes, indeed, Neil. Uh, Tesla has been banned from using adverts in Germany that reference its autopilot system as a fully autonomous driving experience. 
A German court has agreed that adverts which stated Tesla vehicles had full potential for autonomous driving and autopilots inclusive were misleading. It's also worth noting the car maker does have the right to appeal the ruling. Now, Tesla's website made a claim that autopilot would allow for automatic steering, acceleration and braking, taking into account vehicles and pedestrians. This included automatic driving on motorways from entry to exit, including motorway intersections and overtaking slower vehicles. The Tesla website hinted at automatic driving in urban areas by the end of the year, according to the court. The car maker had also stated on its website that the functions currently activated or car active monitoring by the driver. Autonomous operation of the vehicle is therefore not possible. In a tweet replying to the defense of the car makers using the term autopilot, which highlighted a Wikipedia page entry on the system in aviation, uh, CEO Elon Musk stated, Tesla autopilot was literally named after the term used in aviation. Also, what about autobahn? In its room, the court said by using the term autopilot and other wording, the defense suggested the vehicle is technically capable of driving completely autonomously. Furthermore, the impression is given that the autonomous vehicle operation is permitted in road traffic law in the Federal Republic of Germany, but this is not the case, they said. Basically, there have been fears that the term autopilot may lead to consumers believing their vehicles can do more than is both technically and legally allowed. Uh, yeah, I mean, uh, obviously you mentioned Germany there. I mean, there's obviously been a, you know, quite a heavy focus uh, across the whole European region on automotive safety. And um, Phil, um, I'll bring it over to you. And um, what can you tell us about what other systems we can expect on cars in the future? Thanks, Neil. Um, yes, we could be seeing up to 30 new advanced safety systems on cars sold in Europe uh, from 2022. And that's thanks to the development of the General Safety Regulation. Now, this was voted into legislation in 2019 and agreed by all member states, including the UK at the time. And it means that vehicles will need to include safety systems such as intelligent speed assistance, which prevents speeding by reading road signs and using GPS tracking, making it effectively a speed limiter, uh, lane keeping assistance, reversing sensors or cameras, and technology that warns a driver in case of drowsiness or distraction. There'll also be a requirement to have a, a black box type device fitted to all cars from that time forward. Alongside this, there'll be provisions for better seat belts, safety glass to protect pedestrians in, in case of an impact, emergency stopping signaling, and improved impact protection on front and sides, to name but a few. Now, some of our viewers may already realize that uh, some of these systems, such as reversing sensors and uh, lane assistance, are already in place, but crucially, they're not mandatory, and in many car makers' views, they're only options. So from 2022, they must be included in all cars. And this is not without controversy. The European Automobile Manufacturers Association, or ASEA, has said that the timeline to integrate these systems as, as standard components of vehicles is tight. And we need to bear in mind, of course, that the vote was made in 2019, uh, prior to COVID-19. ASEA has also in, uh, opposed the introduction of speed limiters, saying that the technology at present shows too many false warnings due to incorrect information. So what do you think the expected or you know, at least hoped for outcome is? I mean, why has the European Commission you know, reached this point? Well, the EU Commission rightly wants the continent's roads to be the safest in the world, and pushing for that standard, competing with other territories, can only benefit road safety. The Commission has set targets for a reduction of road deaths by this year, 2020. But as we can see on this chart, since 2010, this target has been missed. In fact, over the last few years, the number has actually levelled out. This is probably the reason why the EU Commission has launched the Vision Zero initiative which states that by 2050, there will be no deaths on European roads. Now, first of all, cutting the number of deaths on roads in the areas, on areas big as Europe by half, from almost 55,000 in 2001 to just over 25,000 in 2018, shows how far we have come as an industry, especially when working with governments and legislation. Now, I must just add, of course, that one death is still one death too many, and I do hope that Vision Zero works uh, on that respect. The strict safety standards have been put in place since this chart, since 2001, were highlighted in the 2017 Euro NCAP crash test with the Fiat Punto. Now that was a vehicle introduced in 2005 and at the time it was a five-star vehicle. 
However, in 2017, when Euro NCAT retested it, it became the first car in its history to achieve zero stars, completely unsafe. 2005, five stars, 2017, zero stars. And in fact, at the time, I spoke with uh, Michelle Van Rattigan, uh, Secretary General of Euro NCAT, and he highlighted how the vehicle is the main component of free in road safety. He said that cars have a limited life cycle and therefore they can reinvent themselves on a tighter timeline and a shorter space of time. On average, a road is replaced every 25 years and is also an expensive project. While for drivers, trying to impart on them a lifetime experience when they're learning is virtually impossible. So this is why we're going to see all these new safety systems in place from 2022. Yeah, thanks, Bill. So um, clearly, uh, you're spearheading this initiative with uh, Vision Zero. But um, do you think that's likely to become a become a global standard? And um, you know, what are the implications? You know, if there is no uh, you know worldwide harmony on safety, you know, if that's not reached. Well, there should be a global standard, or there should at least be talked about the global standard, but there isn't. Now, this does cause a problem when it comes to imports and exports, and we're seeing this now with Brexit. The UK is currently negotiating a free trade agreement, or FTA, with the US, and the British government has been warned not to take its eye off the ball when it comes to imports of American vehicles. Now, the UK has signed up to the general safety regulation, and in fact, it was a, it was a factor and a key mover in its adoption. However, once the country leaves the EU for good at the end of the year, it will forge its own path. There has not been a clear announcement yet that new safety standards will be continued independently, but it's hoped that the UK government will adopt them um, in line with Europe. But US safety standards are in fear when it comes to side and front impact protection and also pedestrian safety. US cars are often bigger, heavier, and having these on roads in the UK will pose serious safety issues. The Parliamentary Advisory Committee on Transport Safety, or PACTS, is urging ministers not to rush into a deal that could have such implications. Now, PACTS has highlighted research by UK, Swedish, French and US organisations showing that a typical EU car is 33% safer than the US model when it comes to risk of serious injury from front and side impacts. That is a huge gulf and highlights the need for, really highlights the need for the US to up its game when it comes to safety. According to the US Insurance Institute for Highway Safety itself, over 36,500 people died in the US during 2018. That's just over 10,000 more than the EU, but importantly, only 6,000 fewer deaths than in 2001, whereas the EU, which at the time, that time, had a much higher fatality rate, has cut deaths by around 30,000. But that just highlights how far behind the US really is. It's getting safer, but the work being done is not at the level of, of the EU. Yeah, thanks very much for that, Bill. And, um, you know, and Tom, and uh, well, really, I mean, but I'll bring us to the end of today's video. See, we've uh, packed quite a lot in. So thanks so much again for your insights. Well, thanks, for, uh, thanks for talking to us. <laughs> and um, yeah, as for our viewers out there, please uh, don't forget to subscribe to this channel on YouTube to get all the latest uh, daily brief videos such as this one and um, you can also sign up to a daily brief email at autovistagroup.com slash sign up and obviously that way you can get the day's most important automotive news straight into your inbox and you can also follow us on Twitter at Autovista Group and connect with us on LinkedIn and uh, if you enjoy podcasts uh, you can also listen to our news roundups on Apple, Spotify and Google but uh, as for now Thanks for watching and uh, we'll see you soon.